I'm going to talk about volcanic sunsets, but not just about the physics of them, also about how artists see the sky based on uh, volcanic eruptions. This is the, uh, should I go to, there we go. Uh, this is the Grimsvotten volcano, which four years ago put a lot of sulfur up into the stratosphere. The sulfur turns into sulfate aerosols and reflects sunlight and causes climate change. And I spend a lot of my time studying that. These clouds in the stratosphere reflect sunlight and cool the surface, heat the stratosphere, destroy ozone. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about what the sky looks like after a volcanic eruption. This is a, a, the, a, a figure from a paper about El Chichon. And you can see when the sun sets, the sunlight comes through the atmosphere. And as we all know, Rayleigh scattering will scatter the shortest wavelengths first and produce a blue sky. That's why the sky is blue. That leaves the yellow and red to go through the atmosphere. And after the sunset, the, it comes back and reflects off the bottom of the, of the aerosol cloud. And that produces the, these beautiful sunsets. Here's a picture I took in uh, Madison, Wisconsin of, the uh, of what it looked like over Lake Mendota after the El Chichon eruption in 1982. Perhaps one of the most famous eruptions is that of Krakatau in 1883. And this is a drawing of what it looked like over the Thames in London uh, at, by, by William Ascroft. Now, he was trying to paint exactly what it looked like, but other artists the effect of volcanic eruptions creeps into their paintings. So Frederick, uh, there's one on the left, uh, uh, what his painting looked like after Tambora, and on the right, uh, without a volcano. Uh, the famous painter uh, Turner also uh, did that, and so you can see on the left uh, after a volcanic eruption, and on the right what the sky looks like without a volcano. But uh, I want to talk to you mostly about uh, the paintings by another artist. And here's his self-portrait. Can somebody tell me who this is? This is a self-portrait. That's right. Uh, he wrote his name up in the corner, and uh, it's Edward Munch, uh, the famous uh, Norwegian painter. He looks sort of like a businessman, doesn't he? But actually, he's, he's, he's one of the people that put most of his feeling into his paintings. Now, he saw the Krakatau sunset, and he did a series of paintings of what it looked like over Oslo. This one he called Despair. That's how it made him feel. Painted nine years after the eruption. You can see boats in the harbor and the mountains behind, but the sky has this yellow and, and red color. Two years later, he painted one he called Anxiety. That's how it made him feel. And again, you have this red and yellow brilliant color in the sky reflecting off the water, and that really inspired him. But the most famous painting that he did, as you probably all know, is called The Scream, another version of this picture. It was painted in 1893 uh, based on his memory of the Krakatau sunset. He actually had four different ones. This is the, the first one. And he explained why he did it. He said, uh, I was walking down the road with two friends when the, sky, when the sun set. Suddenly the sky turned red as blood. I stopped and leaned against the fence, feeling unspeakably tired. Then he went on, tongues of fire and blood stretched over the bluish black fjord. My friends went on walking while I lagged behind, shivering with fear. Then I heard the enormous infinite scream of nature. This is my favorite version from 1910, and another time he explained again what he did. I was walking along the road one evening. On one side lay the city, and below me was the fjord. The sun went down. The clouds were stained red as if with blood. I felt as though the whole of nature was screaming. It seemed as though I could hear a scream. I painted that picture, painting the clouds like real blood. The colors screamed. And then he explained why he did this. He said, nature is not only what's visible to the eye, it also shows the inner images of the soul, the images on the back side of the eyes. So when you as scientists are out there studying nature and it's screaming blood and fire to you, pay attention to that. Don't just pay attention to the numbers. Make sure you can think about how it makes you feel, and I think that will make you better scientists. Thanks very much.